wastewater is the Cinderella of the water sector because nobody likes to be with sweet or wastewater and you just treat it any old way. The Caribbean is failing in its handling of wastewater. It's receiving a failing grade from the tourism sector due to the destruction of beaches and reefs as a result of pollution. It's receiving a failing grade from fishing industries, where pollution has affected fish breeding grounds and our food supply. It's receiving a failing grade from the public health sector due to increased incidence of disease caused by unsanitary conditions. And it's receiving a failing grade because the interaction of untreated wastewater with stressed environmental systems makes future adaptation to climate change more difficult. I would say as far as 36 years ago, the Caribbean Environmental Program and many governments within the region identified that runoff or discharges from non-point sources of pollution were impacting the region significantly. And they recognized that something needed to be done. The LBS protocol, which stands for the Protocol on Land-Based Sources of Marine Pollution, was developed and signed by all the countries of the wider Caribbean region in 1999. At the core of that was the recognition that pollution of the marine environment was one of the major challenges facing our Caribbean region. And out of that, domestic wastewater or sewage was identified as the number one pollutant impacting our coastal and marine environment. There are three significant challenges to the proper handling of wastewater. Insufficient financing, inadequate policy and legal framework, and the low priority placed on wastewater treatment. The challenge now is that as population growth has, has taken place, we've had a, a mushrooming in terms of our tourism industry, we've had greater development, especially along the coastline, the funding for wastewater has not kept pace with the investment that we now need in the wastewater sector. So you find that the traditional sources of revenue that we normally get from taxes is just not enough. Legislation continues to be a significant problem. Although we're focusing on funding, there is no sustainability without the proper enabling environment, both at the policy level, the environmental level, utility regulation, industry regulation, to drive it and sustain it and, in fact, even create a demand for financing. There's a whole change of culture that needs to take place in terms of improving that framework. And I think at the crux of the matter is environment is still not seen as priority, quite frankly, within senior decision makers. In response to various international conventions and protocols, the Caribbean as a region needed to find a solution to the complex problems posed by wastewater. The Caribbean Regional Fund for Wastewater Management, the CRU, was established in 2011 by the Global Environment Facility and is being implemented by the Inter-American Development Bank and the United Nations Environment Programme over a four-year period. We believe this program is going to be a game changer, if you will. It's going to allow us to test interesting solutions to, to give the push for the sector to, to achieve universal access and treatment of all the wastewater that we create. Demonstration projects are being established in Jamaica, Belize, Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago, which will serve as financing models that may be replicated by other countries of the region and even internationally. Jamaica has 13 uh, plants that will be rehabilitated. In fact, in certain cases, they're going to be building new plants in at least three locations. In the case of Belize, we have a very interesting and exciting possibility. We started looking at Placencia, which is a tourism town, and putting in a system there. But we've also found that given the timing for Placencia, we will also be able to fund another project in Belmopan, which deals with, which is the capital of Belize, which deals with uh, improving the current system. In the case of Guyana, we're looking at public-private sector partnerships. There are a number of operations from pharmaceutical operations to uh, soft drink operations to distilleries that are being examined to tourism facilities. But it is likely that it may be more than one project that is identified to receive funding 
in Guyana. And in the case of um, Trinidad and Tobago, the proposed what we call first generation project is in Tobago and it is the rehabilitation of the Scarborough plant. Across the demo projects, there are two funding mechanisms being tested the revolving fund, and the credit enhancement facility. There are three benefits for establishing a wastewater revolving fund, among others, but three come to mind. The first is that it focuses attention on wastewater as an important governmental and societal issue. It focuses attention on the environmental impacts, on the health-related impacts, and on other economic-related impacts that wastewater treatment or the lack thereof uh, imply. Secondly, it calls attention to, of government agencies to the issue of wastewater and wastewater treatment and that attention puts in proper priority the need to address uh, wastewater as a health and environmental issue. And thirdly, as a financial matter, the revolving fund provides a sustainable source of financing for wastewater projects into the future. With respect to uh, the credit enhancement facility, which is being done only in one country by the National Water Commission, it has an interesting approach where what is happening is that funds are being used to leverage better interest rates from a commercial banking sector, which to date have been kind of reluctant to provide funding for investment in uh, wastewater infrastructure. One of the major problems faced by existing wastewater facilities relates to ongoing maintenance. The lack of this has been attributed to the absence of skills. As you go from one country in the Caribbean to another, water and wastewater utilities always seem to be the ones which are most poorly operated, poorly managed, they're not financially viable. So the crew is attempting to do direct support to the utilities to enable them to prepare bankable and financially viable wastewater projects. We had a discussion with the development banks who said there is money out there for wastewater management, but they're not getting good proposals to access these funds. So targeted support is going to be provided to utilities to help build their capacity. Similarly, we have to do that type of training to your legal, your attorney general, the person who is doing the drafting of new pieces of wastewater regulations. We have to do that training among the academic community, the research community, so that we can start doing more research on the opportunities to be provided by wastewater in the region. Having identified the issues facing correct wastewater management, the region receives an A-plus for the efforts of the Jeff Crew project an A-plus for introducing innovative financing mechanisms, and A-pluses for promoting policy reform and a capacity building. I think beyond just the implementation of a financing mechanism, the crew project will do great for Guyana in that it brings into focus an issue that has long been left in the backwaters of development. By the crew project, a national development outlook for wastewater management could result. That is an awareness could be created in, in Guyana about the private sector, communities and government on the issues of wastewater management as an opportunity to make a link between water development and wastewater. And I, I look forward to the opportunities that this project can provide to bring this issue of wastewater management into greater focus in Guyana. We have to recognize that uh, wastewater management and its effective treatment is not something that we can say is a low priority or something that we can ignore. It is in fact a significant development requirement, particularly in the context of a region whose development and whose quality of life of its people rest on its natural resource base. So if we fail to treat with the issue of managing wastewater effectively, we are perhaps dooming our region to a future that is not prosperous, 
both in terms of our economic development, in terms of the health of our, our people, in terms of the quality of life, and in terms of hedging our bets in terms of how we adapt to climate change. It is absolutely essential that we deal with this issue.